Oh boy, there's so many things I'd rather be doing right now. <laughs> so I removed the uh, progress bar from the application because um, some slower speed computers were having issues with uh, the GUI and, and it was causing some performance issues. So what I'm doing now, since I removed the, uh, the progress bar, is the delay value for transmitting is giving me issues and I'm sure it's going to give you guys issues as well. So what I did is I just modified the program here. So every time we receive a reset request, I increment the delay value and I have been doing this all night <laughs> because as it gets errors, then it increases the value by 50 and tries again. So I'm finding a number range that works well for me and then that's the number I'm going to use and then everyone else can modify it. So I don't know if I can explain it super well. I don't have anything to draw on here, um, but if I were to like load up paint, maybe I can, maybe I can explain. So um, what happens is, is that there's, there's two computers, right? On one side, you have my PC, whatever it is. That's my, put up with my, my nice writing, okay? It's gonna be the best writing in the world. And on the other side, you have the NABU. So what's happening is that, um, we both have clocks, right? We both have a, this is a picture of a clock, all right? This is, this is, this is gonna go down in history, this artwork, all right? Now, my clock, sure, it runs at three gigahertz, whatever it is, okay? Gigahertz. And the NABU runs at like 0 0.003, whatever it is, gigahertz, right? Like three megahertz. So, um, but they both know what time it is. They both have a clock. They both know what a millisecond is. Put it that way. That's all that matters. They both have a concept of the millisecond. So what serial does, um, when you hear of your or serial communication, it expects that both machines have a sense of measuring time. So that if this machine here is sending pulses of data and that's measured, in something called bits per second, okay? And there might be a space here. And actually, UART goes up other way around. It, it pulls it down, but we're gonna pretend that it goes up in this case. I don't wanna confuse you here, but. So anyway, so this, this bit of, of every bit, okay, is a measurement of time. And you can calculate what that time is based upon the bits per second. So soon as the receiver sees a start bit, and that's why whenever you look at um, serial communication, you always say, you know, one start bit, um, seven data bits or whatever, eight, eight data bits, and then one zero stop bits, right? Or sometimes one stop bit. Um, what that means is as soon as it sees the first bit, that means, hey, I better start listening. So at that moment, as soon as it sees a bit, it turns on its little timer. So its little timer turns on, that's my checkbox for a timer turning on, okay? And now it starts counting every bit. One, this so it goes, this is a one, this is a zero, this is a one, this is a zero. That's because this machine, in the case of the NABU, knows that it's broadcasting at one hundred and one, so we'll just, we'll just say, there we go. 111 kilobits per second. And because the receiving end also knows that it's receiving at 100 kilobits per second. Okay, so therefore, because they both have a concept of what that time frame is, because they're both configured for this amount, the receiver and the transmitter are synchronized. And if it goes off a little bit, like what I'm doing here on purpose, then sometimes there's a little bit of an overlap. And it's okay because the it'll it'll catch it. Now what's happening for us is we're not transmitted at 111 kilobits. No, 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 we are not. And in fact, I'm gonna change the color for this one because we can only transmit at one one five point two kilobits per second. Okay? So that's why I drew this off a little bit because what's happening is as it transmits, it's transmitting faster than this is receiving. So one bit of information, okay, is eight 
bytes plus a start bit. So what's happening is that as this, this machine is receiving the data, it gets the first bit, no problem. It kind of gets a little bit of the second bit, but not as much. So as it goes on, it gets becomes 3% off. That's a huge percentage, percentage of margin of error. So by the time it gets to the last bit, it might just be grabbing the tiniest little piece of it. And it might also confuse this as a start bit. Okay, because it's hanging out there. Now, I, it's not really, that's not really happening so, because we would see a way different behavior. Nothing would work at all. But what is happening though is that I don't think the very last bit is getting read. So, and there's another problem too. Um, we also are transmitting with this, this is USB, we're transmitted at 4.8 to 5 volts. And RS-422 is between, now you have to check the data sheet, I believe it is between um, 7 and 12 volts, which means we're under the threshold. So not only are we doing an incorrect timing, because this is the best we can do, because that's what the machine broadcasts at, um, not only are we doing incorrect timing, but we're also doing a voltage that is lower. So there's two things happening here, and that's why we have this TX delay value in the software. And TX delay is um, a, a, a microsecond delay between bytes that it's transmitting. So as we, as we talk, I just keep resetting it so that we can keep, uh, find out a value that works. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a little bit longer. Um, the new version, which I'll show you here, get you excited. It also has a TCP server built into it so that we can have remote connection to it. And that will be pretty exciting. Um, I think that I'm gonna find a, a value that works, but let me tell you that I think the real solution here is to create a breakout board at some point that takes the, the IO chip, the, uh, TR, whatever it is, and on the data sheet in front of me, breaks out the UART pins to a, uh, a USB UART adapter that you can plug into your computer when your computer's over here, right? Here, oh, sorry, I like that, I like that different color. There, isn't that fancy? Okay, if anybody wants this, um, I'm gonna NFT it. <laughs> this isn't gonna be my crypto, my NFT crypto first, first ever. No, I'm not gonna do that. So this is exactly what we'll end up having to do, I think, at some point. Just create a breakout board, raise the, the chip off the uh, off the PCB, put it on the breakout board, hook up. And this will be neat, too, because we can also hook up an Arduino directly to it, and we can put an ESP32 in there and connect it all over Wi-Fi. And I have some interesting ideas about that. So that's a future project. But for the time being right now, I'm going to keep rocking this. We're going to see if we can get a, uh, a value that works for me, and then you guys can build off that number. And I don't know what my computer is. I'll post the specs. It's, a, it's got a CPU in there someplace. So w once we get that kind of my specs and you can base it on your computer, we can either increase it or decrease the value as necessary. But this is working pretty good. I've been uh, pushing and reset quite a bit on this value, whatever it's at. We'll take a look later. Okay, that's an update for tonight.